Hi guys, this is Fenchy and today I want to talk about notes. You have been a lot asking me about making a video explaining notes and I understand because when I was a beginner, I was completely lost with notes. When I started, I remember being super overwhelmed by note trees. I couldn't sleep at night. Corrector. Yeah, that was unpleasant. After years of sleepless night, I will give you my tips to understand and use well each node. So we will cover together corrector, parallel, layer, outside, and splitter. I will show you at the end of the video how I build my node tree. So now let's jump right in. So guys, today we're gonna do a run through uh, on all the nodes that exist. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, show you the nodes, uh, what's the effects, and also like I will tell you in a real life situation when I can use them. We start with uh, the most simple, which is uh, the corrector. I'm taking back our project that we've done uh, together. For example, if I want like to put something else after my tap and tint, what I'm gonna do is like just create another node. To create a new node, it's gonna be option S or uh, on your PC is gonna be Alt S. And so uh, you have a new node. This node is called a corrector. Uh, this is actually the basic node and it works in a linear fashion. Why I say linear fashion, it's because if you see this node tree, this is the source that feed the uh, first node that is uh, our LGG, that goes to SAT, that feeds SAT, that goes to contrast, that feed contrast, that goes like to temp and tint, that feed temp and tint. If you want, the the logic is LGG is fed by the source and after the saturation is actually fed by LGG. So that means that uh, if, for example, I would put the saturation at the source instead of after LGG, that would be a different result because the saturation would go uh, on the source, right? Like we just take from the source. Here, we want it to take from uh, the balance because we want to keep our uh, uh, initial balance uh, to its um, realm, right? A corrector node will be uh, uh, fed by something else before it, okay? For example, if I want to add something on the temp and tint, uh, let's say like modify this color of this dress, right? I would just like put, uh, let's try, I think it would be here. I will just like move my color wrapper. Oh, this is the skin. So the dress should be somewhere, somewhere here, yeah. So I would move my color wrapper like this. So you see the dress like become bluer and you see the dress become like yellower. So for example, if I leave this node and um, I disable the temp and tint that was fed with, that's a completely different color that like, we will have because then instead of being fed by temp and tint, it's being fed by contrast because we bypass this one. So this is how like correctors are uh, uh, working. So this is, this is correctors. There's another node called parallel. So the parallel is um, a node. So you can create a parallel with uh, option P. So this node, it permits you to have uh, for two nodes the same source. These two nodes will be after mixed into uh, the next node. To show you an example, I would do like, okay, um, I would put maybe five of color boost, take, take, take. We go five, five color boost. Okay, let's go five. Well, five, five, zero, three. <laughs> And then I'm going to uh, do 503 here also. So what happened here is accumulation of these two nodes based on this one, right? If, for example, I disable one. So you see, I mean, like, I think maybe for YouTube it's not so obvious. Let me check. 
yeah it's not so obvious so we're gonna just like crank the saturation okay instead of color boost at 5 i put at 10 or 15 yeah, let's go 15 so it's very obvious let's go 15 okay so i'm at 15 for uh, both of them right so um as it's cumulative that means that if i disable one one node then like uh, the effect of these two will be uh, reduced to half. So for example, I disable this one. So before, after, this is like this. If I disable both, then it comes back to normal. If I only disable, uh, I only enable this one, it comes back to what we had like half half, right? So uh, these two nodes uh, are fed by the same source and sorry we'll add each other it's cumulative okay and of course you know parallel you can uh, create way more input source huh? i can go like like this it's really useful in situations where um you you have to um get just one node as a source so uh, for me when i use it uh it's most of the time uh from uh, my source feed, so my initial input, uh, or it's for having very precise correction. So for example, like I want, uh, I want to relight a scene, I will use that. Plus I want to, um, for example, like uh, affect uh, a part of the skin tone or something like this, I will, I will do this kind of uh, node. After the parallel, we have another node that like is, um, for me, I remember that was really complicated to understand when I was a beginner colorist because I never really had knowledge in After Effects, Photoshop or Illustrator. So um, this is a node that works like the parallel node, but permits you to uh, add composite modes. So that means that, for example, if I create my uh, layer mixer, so it's option L, I can, in this layer mixer, take a composite node and add like whatever I want. So for example, uh, let's say this, this actually, this node is very useful for a uh, bleach bypass, for example. So we're going to do a bleach bypass together. So I go to overlay. And so the node that is at the bottom is priority on the node at the uh, up part. So this is a bit um, confusing, but this one is more important than this one. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, I want my bleach bypass here is completely crushed, right? So I'm like, okay, there's uh, less saturation that could be made. So I'm just going to focus on this node for saturation. And maybe I will just raise a bit the lift and uh, tone down a bit the gain. Okay, so that would be that would be a bleach bypass. This is the layer mixer, and now we're gonna talk about uh, the outside node. So this is one of my favorite because it saved me a lot of time. So when I want to do a vignette, for example. I will create my vignette after all my transformation. So I will create a node. Here I will just like, you know, put a power window, light my subject. I want the subject to be very lit up. I abuse uh, the vignette for just the sake of a uh, YouTube video. Um, and I'm going to add a node and I'm going to add an outside. What is the effect of outside is doing the contrary of your node. So that means that if I created a window in the first node, then the, my outside node would be everything around my window. For example, if I do a vignette and I just like darken the surrounding areas, you will see the effect if I disable just this node and it's before and after. So only all the areas around the power window here, where I'll show you, only the areas around the 
these power windows are affected in node 08 okay so this is how we use an outside node uh, there's way more other um, use but for me like the mo most of the time i use this node is for vignette for uh, the splitter node i will have to go to a color node and add to, 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 add a splitter combiner node so what does this node do uh, this node is actually separating the red channel the green channel and the blue channel so uh, on the 07 it's going to be red channel so let's say i want to add yeah, more red into my mid i'm just turning my gamma and put less red into my lift so just i'm just turning my lift okay here i want to add maybe more green into my gamma so here we are very green right and i want to put less green into my lift okay so then we are way more bluer because the blue stayed intact and then like here this is my blues let's say like i'm, I'm doing the same huh? i put uh, more blues into my gamma and i put less blues into my lift then we come back to the same uh, image almost <laughs> almost if you see this is just a separation of red green and blue so uh, to be deadly honest with you i'm not really using a lot this node i'm only using it for uh, very special grades uh, when for example like i i want a very very special look but um, uh, this one is uh, most of the time i won't use it but i mean in situation it's good to know uh, that we have this right that is all for the presentation of nodes. Now I'm going to show you how I'm uh, building a node tree. So to build my node tree, I stole <laughs> a technique from uh, Cullen Kelly, uh, which is uh, having your primaries and your secondaries fed by uh, the source. So um, uh, I use this technique uh, for a few jobs and I find it very useful because um, everything that you do in primaries and everything that you do in secondaries are fed by the source so you have way more manipulation um, possible you know from the source so this is our cst that we've built together uh, on the first video of beginner tips and uh, i'm gonna create a node so the zero one create a node before is shift s and I'm gonna make it parallel. So option P, option P, parallel node, okay? So this node will be my primaries. This node will be my secondaries. Primaries, as we've seen together, is global tools. So I'm gonna have like technically, I think uh, just one node for my balance so this is my balance i'm just like uh, pushing my offset and just like fine tuning my lift gamma and gain okay that's all for me uh, and here i'm gonna just separate my temp and tint uh, and my saturation so i'm just gonna go a bit more sad a bit more color boost not too much and i will have my temp up some magenta because we like it okay so after i can do my secondaries here my secondaries would be like everything that is actually precise in the grid so it's uh, it's more micro adjustments so the micro adjustment would be maybe the skin. So I would like find my skin here, like tac tac. I will make you a video about skin tone. And don't worry, this this example is only to show you how I build a node tree. I would take my skin, go somewhere nice, you know, a bit poppy. That would be nice. Okay, pretty good. And in my balance, I I realized that like um, my uh, light is too overexposed so i can go down a bit more with my gain okay then we have a nice contrast after you know like this would be my secondaries let's say 
So I can have like, it depends on the project, I can have like multiple uh, nodes uh, for the single series. But after, most of the time, I don't need a layer mixer, I don't need splitters, I don't need other parallel nodes because if I can nail the look in my primaries and my secondaries, this is good. I don't want to relight, I don't want to uh, waste time to relight, or I don't want to waste time to uh, be so precise uh, because sometimes I have like very big timelines to do. So um, I would just like stay on the strict minimum. At the end, I would like maybe, if the project allow it, put a vignette, tech, you know, up, I put a vignette push a bit and I will create my outside node where I just go down so then like my subject is well lit <laughs> no my, my subject is uh, is a bit more like is standing out a bit more so uh, this is how I do guys try this technique it, it made my process uh, go way uh, faster if you want to check out the video of Kellen Kelly about understanding the nodes uh, I put this in the description if you want to know a bit more about parallel nodes for example Darren Mosin like did a very good video on parallel nodes so I put it also in the description if you want to check it out I see you next week for another video see you <laughs>